Pa, I says, could you, do you think we could build a guitar? He says, no oh, kid, we can build anything. He says, and you know, a few months, weeks, or whatever it was later, we built this most gawky looking thing you ever saw. I mean, it, was, it, was a, it was a horrible sight. But it was a neat instrument, it really was, because it had one neck stretched off this way, one out this way, and again, it was just not what I wanted. So over the next seven or eight years, I developed the duo lectar. Mm -hmm. I sold the first, uh, sold 25 of them to one to wholesale music in San Francisco. I don't know why they ever bought them, because they really were still crude. You know, what I, mean? I still hadn't developed a lot of this stuff. So I still believe to this day, this is the, it, when you really can see what this instrument can do with the vault, the multiple of two hands and the ability to have wide spacing, electronic mute. It's really. This instrument can do things that I haven't even touched, and 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 I think this is really a major new instrument for the world. Mm -hmm. I really believe that because it's it's it, it's to be designed to get lots of sustain, lots of, of there's you know like I said it's very quiet. It uh, it does everything from slide guitar obviously. <laughs> stuff the way you can't do that because these fingers are locked in a position. I love guitar, don't get me wrong, because I love regular guitar because I played it first and, and that's what I have built and sold all my life, a lot, a lot of those. But this is still my, my dream is the touch guitar and I really believe that its day will come. <laughs> That was a high melody. See how you can drive the little... I'm a little nervous here. I'm playing for a bit. But, but you can see how far you can read. See, I'm holding a little, little seven. So it's, it's, it's like, because your hand is this way, you can do anything with your hand, and you can hold more multiple chords, you know, like a, a like a. And you can turn your hands. So a lot of times I play, I'll play like a regular guitar, like, like a tapping player would play over the shoulder or over the top and the one on the under. They're doing the same thing I'm doing. They're playing their left hand in the position they can only play because it's 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 going to be mono or nothing. You yeah. know, in other words, uh, uh, and this way you have that 90 degree turn you can do. So you have a little bit of a different option, but it gives you three total positions mm -hmm. now to play in. And, and the bass EQ is way down into where you can make that uh, low string here just sound like almost like your low string on the guitars. It's a fun, it's a fun guitar. After about 1985 or 90, uh, I, I'd go back to Nashville and open for like Barbara Mandrell, Waylon, and different people in what they call fanfare week. And, and it was fun, you know, where I could, I just used their drummer and I'd perform. And it was, and I really knew at that point that I had some really strong uh, 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 something going for me because I, the instrument at that point would get, I don't mean tout myself here, but I could go up with songs like uh, some of the ones that I do and, uh, and, and people loved it. I mean, I'd play for 8,000 people, I guess, standing ovations, which may, meant that I was introducing something really new to these people that they really loved. But I remember I had a good sound crew. I had Irby Mandrill, Barbara's dad up there, fidgeting with all the controls, blowing me out of the park. <laughs> Even if I'd been playing, but, but at that time, I knew how to play it a lot better. And I've never been able to record. This is a fact. I, if I ever could record what I can do on this instrument, it would be amazing, because it is a, a, a I could do a whole tribute to Les Paul. I do it for every one of his original tunes. That would be a hit. That'd be nice. And Chet Atkins, it's amazing on a Chet Atkins show. It's just so, so crazy. When you would do a, you had to, when you played his songs, and they were great. I, I loved his songs. But you had to try to get those bass notes in, you know, when you're playing and try the deal. One note on the bass, simple.
can't buy anything to make, like you can go out and buy every part to make a regular guitar a, a, a hundred times. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that on this guitar. Every part had to be made uh, and designed for that. For instance, I found out basses love my individual bridges. In fact, uh, Ibanez, who I'd built guitars for, for in the 90s, they basically tried to build the individual, but it has to be built right. The individual bridge eliminates. Basses have a tendency to have a big crosstalk. When you pick that bass string, you know, you have a tendency of having that, that string. You can feel it in the strings there, especially if you have a common bridge. And I found out that that didn't work real good for me, especially in the early stages where I was using more of a manual mute before the 80s. And so I de uh, in, in developing that with a bridge, individual pickups, and all the strings separated, so there's actually 10 different systems. Now, each one has its own uh, amplifier in a way. Well, it does, totally. Yeah. When I turn on this string, I'm, not turn I'm only turning on that one string. If I play all 10, like I did when I showed that A chord, uh, or chord. So what happens is that, uh, is that you, the, when you put individual bridges and you put them through the body and you use individual pickups, obviously you, and you mute it, the way it is, you eliminate 100% of crosstalk. But when you do it even on a normal bass guitar that's got a full 34th or whatever the scale you're going to have, it eliminates about 50 to 60% of that crosstalk so that when you pick that big string and you're slapping and you're booming, that string doesn't sound at all hardly. It's, in the, it's, it's amazing when we first measured it on the spectrogram how we saw that, the jump of, of, of this right down to where that other string just hardly rang. So, so the bass bridge, that's a nice feature, the bass bridge on the touch guitar. I, uh, it's always been my dream and it'll, it will be till the end of my life because I believe, like I said earlier, I believe it is the next major music instrument in the world because of the capability of being able to play so many ways with, with both your hands. And the other thing is the electronics, uh, which have been developed, the techniques. I, you come up with new music too, remember? Everything, you play different chord, chord positions, different things, and you, and you can get chords you could never even believe to. If you, if you had to change your hands for that little rift right there, you'd have to change all your fingers every time. The touch guitar is so neat because you can slide whole chords to the next chord. I mean, you can, because you're, you're you, you, because of this, I'm covering the strings this way instead of one string. It's like having one string or six in a lot of ways because when you can take a ninth chord and go right up to a, to another D chord or, or C chord in the deal, it really does work. <laughs> Get your little finger. <laughs> so it's just, it's an amazing way to use your finger. And, and, and difficult chords. I was trying to think of some, uh, like, like, uh, do one more little, just short, short of here. I'll do a little bit of just uh, this one. See, I use my thumb, maybe. When I... Fingers can be used for so many, so many different ways, so many ways. So, but, uh, see how my thumb went.
get the idea yeah. of the thing is the fact that you can you're so free where you don't have to pick that one. You've been eliminating the fact of having to think about picking. You can you can you can and the thumb was just really good. It's, it's like yeah. It's so easy to bend on it because first off the short reach on the guitar helps bending obviously. One of the sons of pioneers had one and played it. Uh, still has it. Uh, played it where he used the bass along with the band. I mean, he used the bass, just a regular bass, but then he'd go ahead and get special little effects for steel guitar things and stuff, because you can turn around to get that steel guitar sound. When you turn your hand, it's amazing. And the wide strings, uh, people say, why put such wide strings? I built a guitar and I, for Eddie Van Halen. He could never take it because this guy was sponsored by, you know, uh, 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 Kramer, Kramer. Ernie Ball. Was it Ernie Ball or who was it? Uh, yeah, Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball, Ball yeah. yeah. He did Ernie Ball, he did Kramer. Uh, yeah, Kramer, yeah. And, but, it, but I built it more for the fact of experimenting. I built a straight neck standard guitar called the GTX, but this electronics in it. What it lacked was having a regular pickup too, because this electronics that I use in this guitar will handle a whole pickup. It doesn't handle it on the individual because it's one coil, you know, or two coils, two humbuckers or whatever. So, but, but the board will turn that off and on the same way. It's just that you, you turn the whole pickup off. So, I mean, if, if you've got one string on, it's on. So if you're playing a chord, it's fine. It plays the whole thing. But when you take your finger off that whole, where, or on this one, you can play one string, and only that string's on, the others stay off. So the minute I show people what I'm doing on the touch guitar and how it's strictly designed to be right in line, the bass is where you want it, the guitar shorts wanted, the slope friends, I mean, it, it, all the little things were things that made it uh, fall into line to where it got easier. And, and, and learning it, I sit down with people, people that never played guitar. And I sit down and I say, okay, grab your guitar and show me a, a discord. And they try and, and I, I, even people that have tried to learn certain things, and it's difficult. They can sit down on the touch guitar, play one note, and do that the first time they sit down, you know. You know, they can do this, they, they can play it. I mean, I'm not saying this is anything you'd want to take to them. <laughs> but there's a chord. Yeah. Because you, you're, you're not doing, you're not bending your hand all over the place. You're not having to crunch between little short, uh, uh, quarter inch, five sixteenths inch strings down here. A lot big hands sometimes can't hardly get those chords. You know what I mean? And you're working with five, six strings doing the same thing you used to do with one this way. So, so it gives you a lot of things that you can do. So the touch guitar is not a difficult instrument.